I'm going to be talking about the lab box in this video. This is a daylight loading tank for developing film, either 120 or 135. I have the 120 module uh, on there now. I also have the 135 and, and I've used that. And this is not a how to use the lab box video. It's more of a, um, I guess, what I liked and what I didn't like. I guess you can call it a product review. So we're going to talk about some things that work, some things that need improvement, and hopefully you can use this to decide whether the lab box is for you. So this is not a how to develop film video. I'm going to assume that if you're watching this you already know how to develop film, so that's not going to be part of it. Using the lab box has been a very positive experience. Um, I like the daylight loading ability. Daylight loading meaning we're not in a dark room, it doesn't have to be in a dark bag. You can do this anywhere in complete daylight. You can load your film and then all the way through to develop it to get the negatives out. So that I love. Don't have a dark room. If you're really really into film I guess you you have a, a dark room set up but uh, for most people who are just trying to develop some negatives at home and then scan uh, that doesn't really, they don't really have a dark room anymore. So, it, uh, one of the things I liked using the lab box, it greatly simplifies the loading of the film uh, on the reel. It makes it almost foolproof. Downside is it's only one reel can be developed at a time. So, if you shoot a lot of film, this is probably not for you. You want a uh, tank that can hold many reels and process them all at the same time. But if you're shooting one reel a month or maybe even one a week, uh, this can really help you out. So the reel is the first thing we're going to talk about. Uh, everything is made of plastic and the reel over time has gotten a little sloppy. So we'll take that out. So this reel, this is where the film goes, it comes in three pieces, it starts off like this, this is for the 135, uh, and when you first put it together it is really tight, and that's great, it stays together, but as if you take it apart, put it back together, over time it gets sloppy, and it seems like, it hasn't happened yet, but it seems like over time it wouldn't really hold together. So, um, saying that, that it seems like it won't, I don't have any proof of that, that it doesn't hold together, but over time it seems like it won't really hold together. So I would recommend, first of all, if you're going to use this, put it together once and then leave it. So here I have one for 120 and a second reel for 135, and once I put this together it'll just stay, uh, once I put this together it will just stay together. To figure out a way to store it uh, without having to take it apart. So that would be the point number one uh, that I would recommend. Figure out a way to put it together, just leave it, figure out a way to uh, store it with the reel assembled. Now when you're assembling the reel for the first time, don't be in a rush. You pull it out, you want to put it together right away, you're like, hey, this just goes together. Uh, it can be assembled incorrectly which is, is disappointing a little more thought uh, into the design of this. It could have been designed in such a way that the reel and the hub will only go together one way, the correct way. That's not the way it was designed. It can be put together actually a couple of ways incorrectly. So point number two, slow down and pay attention to how you assemble the reel. So I'm going to assemble the 135 reel. The 120 goes together exactly the same way. First thing you want to look for on the hub is an R and an L. L of course is for left, R is for right. So pay attention to that. Hold the L in your left hand and look carefully, it's easy to miss. Next, look for the L 
on the real or the R. The L, of course, goes on the left side, the R on the right side. So the next thing, you can put, you can get those switched. You can put the left on the right and the right on the left, and your film will not load onto the reel correctly. So you will get your, if you try to develop it that way, you will ruin your film. Now that you have your left and right sorted out, so I have the left reel and the left reel and then the left hub. Those go together, but you have to watch for the arrow. There's a little arrow there. I don't know if you can see that on the video. You have to line that up with the arrow on the hub. Those have to go together. You can put it together 180 degrees incorrectly. And it will go together, but you cannot load film that way. So you have to put it together with the arrows pointing together. So now if you were, if we were put, assembling the 120, you would go to the first notch, but this is the 135, so we'll push it to the inner notch. Now the R, line up the arrow. And there's the arrow right above my thumb. You probably can't see that. The arrow on the hub. Put those together. And now we turn them both clockwise. And now they're locked together. So if you really try to figure out a way to store this like this so you don't take it apart and those uh, locking, uh, the locking of this doesn't wear out over time. So that's point number two. It, uh, slow down, put it together the right way. Uh, with a little more thought into the design, uh, this could have been prevented uh, by lab box, but uh, if you just slow down, make sure you have everything oriented correctly, they'll go right together. So now the next thing I want to talk about is this. This is the knob that you use for agitation and to reel the film onto the onto the reel or unspool the film onto the reel and then you also use that for agitating the film while it's developing. So this is the one glaring weakness of the whole design. This is terrible. Uh, and terrible doesn't even really begin to describe how bad this is. The really, it's, it's so uncomfortable to use and I do have arthritis in my hands, so maybe that's just me. Uh, but after 30 seconds of cranking on that agitating film, uh, I am in a lot of pain. And you have to keep going for several minutes, right? Five to eight minutes of uh, developing and stop, then fix, then wash, and you have to keep cranking that for minutes. So by the end of uh, developing, when I pull those uh, negatives out, boy, you really earned it through a lot of pain. So this is terrible. And well, the really sad part is in the lab box manual, it even shows a crank. So apparently this was an accessory that was only available with the Kickstarter version. So lab box knew that this was the right way to go, but in a cost cutting measure, they went with the knob for production. And that just ruins the experience for me. It is terrible. So I will definitely be building a crank. Um, I will not use this again as a knob. Uh, I will be building a crank and attaching it to that. So um, I can't imagine enough money was saved by getting rid of the crank and replacing it with a knob to completely ruin the experience uh, for customers. One other thing about the knob before we move on the, to turn it, to take the knob in and out, you do have to line up. You almost can't see it. Here, I'm looking for it and I can't find it. So right here, of course, you can't see that and I can't see it now either without a magnifying glass. There's a small dot there. And you line that up with the small dot here that's also almost invisible, and then you can pull the knob out. There's a little ridge right here that holds the knob in, so there's two little tabs, you push that in, turn it, 
and then the two tabs hold on to this rim as you turn it around. Uh, my tabs have actually broken off because I couldn't find that dot. A little raised ridge here would have made that uh, an impossible task of finding that little dot actually possible because you just feel it with your finger, find the knob, find that little ridge, point it up, pull it out. So um, I wouldn't recommend anybody to break those tabs off on purpose, but if it happens on accident, it's okay, not the end of the world, it still works. You just have to make sure you push it in as you turn it around. I hope it works as I, when I put my crank on here, when I replace this with a crank, uh, hopefully it will still stay in there as I uh, use the crank. But again, all, all of my complaints, I think, are related to this knob. This was very much underdesigned. The next thing we're going to talk about is loading the film. So when you load the film, of course, we're using 120 because uh, that's the one we have. That's the 120 module there. Uh, as with any 120 film, you want to make sure you hold it tight. So because 120 film will unspool on you, and it will expose your negatives. So you want to make sure that is held tight. First thing you do is you put the put the paper through that little slot and then you put that down and then close it. And it holds everything tight. Now what's gonna happen, I'm gonna take it back out. What's gonna happen as you can see down in, in there there's a little maybe you can see that. Uh, there's a little cylinder that's going to capture the film. As you unspool the film, by pulling the backing paper out, the film will go down in there. And then this turns and then protects the film. So the film now is in the dark. So it's in its own little dark room. And that keeps the film from being uh, exposed as you move it on to the next step. So one thing you want to keep in mind, as you, un as you unroll the film, you want this to be pointing upward, this knob to be pointing towards the triangle. I've seen that demonstrated actually incorrectly, where people turn it down before they unspool the backing paper. That's actually incorrect, according to the lab box uh, instructional videos. So let's try this again. The lab box videos could be a little more could be a little more detailed. We're gonna put that in there, and this of course is the film guide. So we'll put that in there, and now we'll put the cover on. And now it's its own little dark room. So we'll push this in. We're gonna unroll this. So we're going to keep this pointing upwards at the triangle, and as we pull this out, the film will go down into the little cylinder dark room. Keep pulling. You can see how close we are here, we're at two. So we pulled the paper out, and we've gotten to the point where we actually feel a little resistance here. The film is now down in the cylinder, but it's still taped on one end to the backing paper, and that's the little resistance. So don't just keep yanking on this, and then you pull the backing paper off the, uh, pull the film off the backing paper, and the film unspools in here. Stop when you feel that little resistance. Another clue that you're at the end, you see frame number one on the backing paper. So stop right there. You can tear this off if you want. Don't have to, but you can. We're going to go ahead and do that. Just get this out of the way. Um, but you don't have to do that. Now turn to protect the film. So we turn the dial to the square. The film should be down in that cylinder and completely protected. It's in a dark room now. So now we have to get the backing paper completely off. So 
So let's take this off. And there's the tape. So we just peel that off. And now we can get rid of the rest of the backing paper. So as you can see here, point number five. Here's tip number five. As you're pulling on that, make sure this thing here, this dial, doesn't come back on you. Uh, yeah, there's nothing really locking this in, and as I, depending on what film stock you're using, it could be a little easier, a little harder to get that tape off. And if you're pulling on it and not paying attention, this can gradually come back on you. So make sure you're kind of keeping an eye on this, maybe even check it once in a while to make sure it doesn't try to open up. Of course, if it does open up, you end up exposing your film to light. So right now we are ready to clip the metal clip onto the film. Now it's tempting to pull this out and try to put it down into the film guide. So uh, we don't want to do that though because if you do you will expose your first frame to light as you pull that out. So you want to leave it in there with only this little teeny tiny bit here exposed. Uh, let me tilt that up. So only a teeny tiny little bit of film is exposed. There's no image on there, so that's fine. It's not hurting anything. But you want to take this and clip it onto the center. Get it right onto the center. Get it as straight as you possibly can. That way it rolls up into the film guide and rolls onto the onto the uh, roller. So again, it's tempting to pull this out and try to put it into the film guide. Don't do that because you will lose your first frame. Now, if you want to make sure you always get into the roller with no pro or film guide with no problem, make sure your first film, first frame is not a keeper. So now, so now we bring our dial back up to the triangle. So that exposes our film uh, to the interior here. We have to make sure we have our lid on when we do that. And we use our knob to roll the film onto the film wheel. And there it's going. And now we're completely rolled onto the film wheel. So at this point, so that's uh, point number six was to uh, make sure you clip the metal clip onto the center, but don't pull it up out of the, and try to feed it into the film guide. Just let the film guide do its job. Process it, and then we'll skip ahead to the end, and we'll show what the film looks like after it comes out of the lab box. Through the power of video editing, the film is developed. Just in case you were curious, I put the camera, the film, and the chemicals used uh, in the background there. So, you know what those are. None of that is relevant to the uh, review of the lab box, so I'm not going to talk any more about it. But just in case you were curious, it's there. So the film is developed. It's instant on the video, but it's about 25, 30 minutes later. We're going to open it now and see how we did. So we'll lift the lid off. Take the reel out. And we'll all see it together for the first time. Find the end. Alright, so that turned out just fine. No lost frames except for the one that I accidentally advanced. And it's interesting, we did actually did lose the first frame. I don't know if you can see that there. Looks like we lost the first frame. Too much was pulled, was still out of the 
the little dark cylinder. But all in all, not too bad. Um, the the reel process actually is pretty foolproof. I did have one reel where, or one roll of film that didn't get on the reel correctly, and so the film, some of the reels were touching, and so I lost about half the frames that way. But it could, it only happened the one time, and it could very well have been operator error. It was when I first, first, first got the uh, the lab box. So anyway. I'm going to get this hung up to dry. The film is hanging up to dry now. I did look at that first frame a little more closely. I did lose the first frame. It was due to processing. So it was just uh, exposed uh, just at the edge. So it just didn't quite get down into the dark cylinder far enough to protect it. So I could probably scan it crop it and save some of it but something to keep in mind I guess that's tip number seven uh, you will likely lose your first frame uh, that seems to be happening pretty consistently with the lab box so I think I will just shoot a dummy frame for my first first frame on the, on the roll I lost another one because the Ricoh Flex doesn't have automatic film uh, advanced stop and I just rolled too far past the frame so ended up losing two frames on that roll so it was a 10 shot roll anyway i hope this uh, was helpful if you liked this video please let me know down in the comments if you didn't like this video go ahead and let me know that too so if it was informative uh, if it was educational uh, that's great if it wasn't i hope it was at least entertaining so have a great day